In the world of maritime communication, VHF is king, and while for decades slapping a VHF radio in your boat, connecting it to the battery, and connecting an antenna has been enough in most cases, VHF technology has been advancing and can do a few things that might help save your life. Here's what you need to know. VHF is a fairly simple technology. It's just a radio, and the channels it uses are fairly narrow, usually 16 and 9, with people spilling over to a couple dozen higher channels for less important conversations. You hail on 16, and everyone within your antenna's range hears the hail, including the Coast Guard, a mile or two range for a handheld VHF, or 10 or so miles with a base station and a masthead antenna. When the station you're hailing answers, you immediately take the conversation to a more appropriate channel, I like 68 unless someone locally is using 68 for a cruiser's net or something. This is all very simple, but in more recent years, we've figured out how to make VHF do a little bit more. Digital Selective Calling, or DSC, and the Automatic Identification System, AIS, are two distinct but complementary technologies that modern VHF radios tend to have. DSC is a feature that allows for the sending of a predefined digital message. Basically, if you buy a DSC equipped VHF device for your boat, you can pre program it with a digital footprint called an MMSI number, almost like a phone number and a registration number at the same time. You register for an MMSI number, which is now required for using a VHF, and under your MMSI is you and your boat's personal info. You program that MMSI into your new DSC equipped VHF radio and now if you hit the DSC distress button, the radio will automatically blast out your MMSI info. Basically everything the Coast Guard needs to know about you and your boat. It'd be like having a button for distress in your car and if you break down at the side of the road, pushing it automatically sends tow trucks your info, the make and model and the color of your car, your name and your information. Having all of that info alone is great for the Coast Guard, but also the US Coast Guard has updated their communication equipment under a program known as Rescue 21. This updated equipment now offers not only improved voice communications, but a direction finding functionality and a greatly improved rescue capability for vessels equipped with MMSI. So it will help them locate you. So while the bare minimum used to be slapping a VHF radio in the boat and connecting the antenna, it should now be slapping a DSC equipped VHF in, attaching the antenna and registering and programming the MMSI number. But you can go a few steps further. Modern VHF radios might even have GPS built in, but if not, they are able to connect to your chart plotter. And if you take the time to figure out how to do that and run the wires, then when you hit that DSC button in an emergency while you're sinking or something, it'll automatically broadcast all of your MMSI info, but also your exact GPS position. That can definitely save your life. DSC can go a step further as well. DSC allows a radio operator to send a digital call or alert to one or more selected radio stations. This is similar to a telephone pager, sounding an alarm and leaving a basic message on the selected station's DSC receiver. So if you know the MMSI number of your buddy boat, you can now use the DSC technology to send them and only them a VHF message to get their attention and then directly call them for voice communication, bringing a layer of privacy to the mix. I've never seen anyone really take advantage of that thus far, but the technology is capable of it. Now let's talk about AIS and even fancier VHF radios. AIS is a communication system that uses VHF maritime mobile band channels to automatically transmit and receive ship's data such as identity, type of ship, position, course, speed, and other safety related information, even a picture of the boat sometimes. AIS transponders on ships automatically broadcast information at regular inter intervals, including dynamic information like their position, their heading, their speed, and then that static information like the ship's name, its cargo, and its destination. The effective range is about 40 nautical miles. Information provided by AIS can be displayed on a screen or electronic chart display and information system, assisting in navigation and collision avoidance, of course. Many higher-end VHF radios also 
offer closest point of approach information once only available on radar, while traditional AIS has a range limited by VHF, satellite AIS has expanded the operational capability allowing for global vessel tracking. In modern VHF radios, DSE and AIS are often integrated to provide a comprehensive safety and communication system. For example, a VHF radio with DSE functionality can send distress alerts with the push of a button while the AIS receiver built in can show real-time vessel traffic information on the VHF display. This integration allows for enhanced situational awareness and the ability to communicate directly with specific vessels or shore stations, improving safety and efficiency. Ensuring safety always begins with monitoring channel 16 where crucial safety announcements, warnings and weather and emergency calls unfold. But now, DSC capable VHF radios seamlessly connect mariners and emergency services. The integration of DSC capability enables swift exchange of critical information in an emergency. It's our job as recreational boaters to do things properly, have a functional VHF installed and turned on while we're out there. Monitor channel 16 at all times and register an MMSI number programmed to our radio properly. Don't tie up channel 16 or channel 9. If you're talking with, with someone, switch to a working channel so you're not keeping others from using 16 or 9. In some instances, the Coast Guard may even order you to switch channels if you're being excessive on 16 or 9. A VHF radio is not a telephone. When you're using your VHF, everyone tuned into that station in the area can hear you. Watch your language and try to keep your conversations short and to the point so that others can use the channel too. There's only so many channels and it's really not many. If you hear a distress call and you're able to safely offer assistance, you're supposed to do that. I've actually responded to a few in my travels and was first on scene even though I'm a slow moving sailboat. In one such case, I couldn't hear the distress call itself. They had a handheld radio on board and while no one around them could hear them, the Coast Guard could. The Coast Guard can hear everything in my experience and is always listening on 1-6. The Coasties got the distress call in my case and relayed it over their more powerful equipment asking for help from anyone in the area. A couple fishermen were on a disabled vessel as nighttime was closing in. They asked if anyone in the area could render a tow. My slow moving sailboat happened to be about an hour away and I was on a passage, but the disabled vessel was generally in my path. So I radioed the Coast Guard back and arranged the rendezvous with that disabled vessel. I found them and took them in tow and their handheld VHF had died. So I also became the go-between for them and the Coast Guard. I towed them along at about six knots for an hour before the Coast Guard arrived and took over. What crazy stories do you have about VHF radios? What info do you have to share with other sailors on the topic? Leave it in the comments. The more we talk about this stuff, the better. Oh, and please give this video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.